Hey everyone, Adam Wadden, the creator of Tailwind CSS here. And today I wanna to share with you a project we've been working on for the past few weeks that I think you're gonna be really excited about. So Tailwind has always been tiny in production, right? We use purge CSS to remove any unused styles. And in production, your builds usually end up being between like five and 10 kilobytes, really, really small. But in development, your CSS files can actually get really big, especially if you're adding a lot of extra stuff to your config file. And of course, there's a limit to what the browser is actually ultimately willing to even handle. Like if you throw a 20 megabyte CSS file, of the browser is just going to throw up its hands and give up. So up until now, we've always had to be mindful about the sorts of customizations that we're making to Tailwind to make sure that the development CSS file doesn't get completely out of control. Here I've got an example of a Tailwind project that actually does a bunch of pretty expensive customizations to the config file. So first you see we've enabled dark mode and dark mode really balloons the CSS file size because now you have light versions of every utility and dark versions of every utility. After that, I've added an extra breakpoint and that really multiplies the CSS file size as well because again, now we have a 3XL version of every single utility in the framework. I've added a bunch of extra colors here and colors take up a lot of space in the file too because they're duplicated for background color, text color, border color, placeholder color, all sorts of stuff. After that, I've configured a bunch of extra variants that aren't normally enabled in Tailwind by default. And because these get combined with all the breakpoints and stuff as well, this can really balloon the file size too. Let's actually compile this CSS file and see just how big it is. So I'm just gonna run npm run post CSS build here, which is just a little script that I've set up for this project. And you can see here, we've ended up with a 12 megabyte CSS file, which is pretty massive. And honestly, this is very close to the limit of what the browser is going to tolerate uh, before you start to run into problems. So I'm gonna start my actual Webpack dev server here. This is a Next.js project. And I wanna show you what it looks like to work with a file of this size when you're actually in the browser. Uh, so let's run npm run dev to get the Webpack server going. And the first thing you'll notice is that this actually took 19 seconds uh, to compile the whole project. And that's because when you're building a giant CSS file like this, you have to kind of funnel it through all of Webpack's machinery where it generates source maps and does all sorts of stuff internally with it. And giving it such a giant file to work with makes it do a lot of work and could take a lot of time to build. Now let's open this up in the actual browser here. So you notice it took a little bit of time to load, but a lot of that is actually just Next.js doing like its server-side rendering and stuff. Um, and the browser actually does handle the CSS pretty well when you're just looking at sort of a static version of things. But as soon as you open the dev tools, things will start to seem a little bit slower. See how we have this spinner here showing up for a while? If I go and select an element, it takes a little bit of time for the styles to actually render here. Same as when I just like click around and look at other things, everything is a little bit laggy. If I go here and I wanna like toggle a style on and off, you can see it takes a little while for that to register as well. So you can see that with this giant 12 megabyte CSS file, the browser, especially the dev tools is really starting to struggle a little bit. So up until now, we've just sort of accepted this constraint, right? And worked around it. We've worked with the config file to make sure that we only enable things that we really need, try to sort of walk that fine line between giving you everything that you actually need to be productive, but not enabling too much such that you start to run into performance issues with things. What I wanna share with you today is a new idea that we've been working on that lets you never think about these sort of file size trade-offs ever again. Let me show you how it works. First, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this dev server. Now I'm gonna head over to my post CSS config file, and instead of pulling in regular Tailwind, I'm gonna pull in a new experimental library we've been working on called Tailwind CSS JIT, which is a just-in-time compiler for Tailwind CSS. Let's start the dev server again and see if we notice anything different. First of all, you'll notice that the entire thing started in 1.9 seconds instead of 19 seconds. If I head over to the browser and refresh here so we know we're working with kind of the latest and greatest, you see that there's not really any dev tools performance issues anymore. I can click around as fast as I want. I can head over here and sort of just like toggle this as fast as I want, no problem. Open dev tools, close it again. Everything's still speedy and fast. So what's actually going on here? Well, what we've done is we've created this new just-in-time compiler for Tailwind CSS that avoids having to compile all the CSS up front and instead compiles only the CSS you're using as you need it. This means that the CSS file never gets huge and never hits that sort of 12 megabyte range. It stays really small the entire time you're developing because we only generate exactly what you need. Uh, let's take a look at some actual code here so you can see what's actually happening. I'm gonna kill this. And um, first of all, just to kind of show you some of the performance benefits we get from this, let's just run that npm run post CSS build again. So you can see just how quickly we're generating this CSS. 
Look at that, less than 600 milliseconds and we generated an 11 kilobyte CSS file. So there's no 12 megabyte CSS file generated that we then have to go and purge. It's just small from the beginning. Let's head over to our Tailwind config file. I'm gonna comment out these three lines for a second so we can just watch the index.html file for changes and I can show you exactly what's happening under the hood. Now let's pull up our build.css file over here and pull up this index.html file over here. And I'm just gonna run um, npm run post CSS watch to start a watcher here. And you can see the whole thing boots up in about 540 milliseconds, compiles all the CSS. I have all of Tailwind's base styles disabled just so we can more easily see what's going on over here. But if I go ahead and run like text 4XL, hit save. Oh, they've got a class added in 11 milliseconds. Font bold, 4.84 milliseconds. BG red 500, five milliseconds. You can see it's just generating all the classes we need as we need them. I can add like hover font medium. I can add SM underline. You know, it generates the hover styles, it generates the media queries. I can even do something like SM focus hover active font bold. And now we've generated a new class that contains all of the different um, variants all stacked on top of each other. This is something you couldn't even do in Tailwind before this because we were too concerned about file size. We couldn't give you all of the different stacked combinations of things. But now because things are generated on demand, you can just add whatever you want and it'll just generate it as you need it. So not only does this have massive performance implications, right? Everything is so much faster now. Dev servers start up faster. Chrome Dev Tools runs faster. You never have to think about the file size in terms of how it's going to slow things down. It also lets us add extra features to Tailwind that we couldn't have added before. For example, stacking variants like this. The other cool thing is we don't even have to have any variants configured at all. We can just delete this entire variance configuration, and it doesn't care. It's still gonna generate the variance for everything. Every single variant that Tailwind supports is now generated and included out of the box. You do not need to say, oh, I wanna enable group hover for this. Oh, I wanna enable focus visible for this. If it's included in Tailwind, it will work. You never have to think about it or configure it ever again. There's one other really cool feature that this new JIT engine enables that I'm excited to share with you. Let's head back to our code here. I'm gonna restart our actual dev server. And I'm gonna head over to this index.js file, which is kind of like the main landing page. Uh, let's head and take a look at the design here. So you can see in this design, we've got this sort of cool background pattern going on. And we need to kind of put this in a different place on mobile. So if we open up the dev tools here, you see once we get to like under a certain size, see it kind of jumps a little bit, it's subtle, but we had to put it in a slightly different place to get the design to sort of work. So the way that we do that in the code, because this is just like a really quirky background image that needs to be positioned in a hyper-specific way, I'm using inline styles to just like translate it exactly the way that I need to. But because the translates that I'm doing are not sort of numbers that fall into Tailwind's kind of built-in design system, the only way for me to do this was to make two copies of the image, one that's shown on mobile screens and one that's shown on all other screens and just add an inline style. And if you've worked with Tailwind enough over the years, you've probably had to sort of implement this pattern yourself too. And it can be kind of annoying because you're kind of adding this duplicate markup, sort of managing things that are like mostly the same classes and, you know, you really just wish that you could do this using Tailwind's um, responsive modifiers, the same way you can do most other things. So let me show you how we can refactor this using this new JIT stuff to just use a single image tag. I'm gonna take this first image, I'm just gonna duplicate it, and then I'm gonna comment out these other two so we just kinda of have them for reference. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, take a look at what we're actually doing here. So we're hiding it on small screens. Let's get rid of that. We want to show it on all screens. Um, the only other difference here is it looks like we use top zero instead of negative top 16 once we're uh, sort of on small screens. So let's just say SM top zero. Okay, so we've got this translate thing happening here, right? Well, how are we going to make this work? Um, check this out. I'm going to say transform translate X and then I'm going to use square brackets. And in the square brackets, I'm just going to write negative 700 pixels. What? What is he doing? And then over here for small screens, I'm going to say translate X. And then what did we have? Negative 650 pixels. Then we get rid of this inline style. I'm going to hit save. Head back over to the browser. And let's find this background image and see what's been added to it. Check this out. This generated two classes on demand for us using arbitrary values. 
So we didn't have to change anything in our config. We didn't have to use inline styles. If we wanted to break out of Tailwind's design system for some sort of edge casey thing, all we have to do is wrap those values in square brackets. And because we're generating the styles on demand, we just generate the styles on demand. You don't even have to configure it. Um, I'll show you another cool use case for this. Down at the bottom here, we've got this like share on Twitter button. And this is using a custom uh, Twitter blue color, right? And we've added this to our config file because we needed to be able to reference it. So if we head over to the config file, you can see here's Twitter blue. Well, you're never gonna use Twitter blue on your site as part of your real site, right? It's not really part of your design system, it's Twitter's brand color. So you might not wanna add it to your config file if you're only gonna use it in one spot. So check this out. Let's head down to the Twitter blue section. Let's get rid of BG Twitter blue. And again, we'll use the square bracket notation, paste in a hex code this time. And now you can see we've got BG with that hex code and it generated the class for us. So now we can get rid of anything like that uh, in our config file completely and the config file can really just represent our design system. And I really like the square bracket syntax because it sort of like points out to you pretty clearly when you're breaking out of your design system. Now, of course, with great power comes great responsibility and you should probably not build a whole site just using arbitrary values like this. Although if you wanna do that, you can, I'm not the cops. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this uh, feature and what it kind of enables. And we've got lots of other cool ideas um, for how we might be able to take advantage of some of this on-demand stuff to make Tailwind even better. So I hope this is exciting to you. I hope this solves some of the problems that you might be facing in some of your larger projects. I love that you really just never have to think about the file size in development at all anymore when you're working this way. That's always been sort of a annoying thing to have to consider when working with someone in the past because of the limitations in the browser and build tools where they just really struggle with giant CSS files, which of course is totally understandable. But with what we're doing now, you never have to think about that ever again. All the variants in the world that you want to use are enabled. If you need to break out of your design system for one little thing, you don't have to come and even edit your config file to do that. Anytime you do edit your config file, the changes are really, really, really fast. You can see it's like 55 milliseconds to change your config file and recompile everything from scratch now. And if you're just making a change like a template file, still super fast. It's honestly just as fast as it is just to change some content with all of your JavaScript stuff updating. So again, we're super excited to get this out there. Uh, by the time you're watching this video, this is going to be available on npm. You'll be able to pull in just at Tailwind CSS JIT and try it out in your project. Sort of the plan here is once we work out all the kinks in this separate library, we're going to roll it all right back into Tailwind CSS. So you'll be able to just do Tailwind CSS kind of as you have normally in the past. And uh, once we kind of do that, everything will be available in your config file, probably something like mode JIT. But for now, it's going to be that separate library at Tailwind CSS JIT. Download it, test it out, try it, break it, help us kind of work out any of the kinks. And hopefully we can sort of really bulletproof this entire thing and make this the default for Tailwind 3.0 sometime later this year. Thanks, everyone. Hope you're excited to check this out and uh, let me know what you think.